so this interview is going to kind of take a bit of a look back. I think it's about time that we kind of took a look back and see how you guys kind of see what's happened in the past five years. Because I reckon, I mean, 2006 is one of the last years for me that artists suddenly broke through out of absolutely nowhere and kind of just hit straight to the top. What do you think? I mean, it doesn't really seem to be happening so much these days for me. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's more like YouTube videos and... <laughs> Yeah. Funny cat videos seem to just <laughs> pop out of nowhere. Um, yeah, I guess there have been a couple. Um, I think that to the mainstream audience, you know, like uh, Adele would be something in America that people weren't aware of, but uh, if you were into that, you would, you know, it wouldn't have been out of nowhere. Um, but, you know, I do know what you're saying. There is sort of this weird, like, in between area where there's a lot of great music, but it's not necessarily just making its way into the mainstream's eye. And also, we, we're not aware of the perspective over here, you know, it's different yeah. in America. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It seems like there's, like there's sort of on the verge of something happening, you know? Perhaps. So, does your view on what makes you happy in 2011, how does that differ to how you felt right at the beginning of your career? I guess a lot's changed, but ultimately, we still love playing music live. And that's, I don't think that's ever changed. I think that just gets better because we feel like uh, just as time goes on, we get better live as a band. Um, I think we kind of wish we were as good <laughs> like now as we were back, or good back then as we are now playing live. Like we would have had a few years to progress as a live band rather than, you know, just kind of be thrown into it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I haven't really thought about it a lot too much <laughs> to look back, but yeah, it's kind of funny to think about where we were at. And pictures. the same question as to success, what do you feel that you want now that, I mean, how does that compare to back then? Is it different? Do you kind of see things differently in terms of what you want your albums to achieve? Um, yeah, it's definitely different because I, I guess musically it's not any different. We just want to be as proud and as happy of, of you know, any music or any record that we put out. But as far as, you know, trying to, you know, guess what kind of success it would have, that, I guess, really hasn't changed either. We kind of <laughs> just wish that uh, we had enough, we could make enough money just to be in a van and a trailer and not have to get regular jobs before we put out the first record. And uh, we weren't really surprised that, um, second record wasn't just an instant you know it's like I think we we're kind of aware of how um, unique what happened on the first record how unique that was so to us we always kind of felt like we weren't that huge band that was just everywhere so we felt a lot more comfortable just kind of being at a little more you know that's partially regular. why I'm doing this retrospective because exactly it's that reason not because you know it ends here it's not like that at all obviously it's not like that but it is a really interesting trajectory, like that first album, that oh, second yeah. album, yeah. and now, you know, here it leads again. Yeah. So, what would have happened if you'd have flopped after that first album, if no one was interested? Where would you be right now? Probably still making music, but... <laughs> we'd either, yeah, we'd either be, you know... But we'd probably have to get a second job, like we'd probably have to we'd work at the Smoothie Hut Working at a grocery store, and yeah. then still writing songs after work. Yeah. Or we'd be back in a van, driving around, playing to a couple hundred people. We wouldn't be able to tour as much, I don't think. Yeah. So that's... We, we love touring, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And would you recommend your past six years to someone who's trying to break through right now? No, those are our six years. Go get your own. Well, it's tough to say. I mean, we get asked a lot about what we think about how it happened, and it's tough for us to say because we're just sort of speculating on how it, we would feel had it just been, you know, started slowly, and then, you know, we don't really know how we would have felt if that were the case. We only kind of have what we have, so. What lessons have you learned in the past six years? Oh God, a lot. <laughs> Just in music? I don't know, it's hard to say. Uh, we learned that uh, a lot of really close friends will do a lot of weird things for money. We learned that... Uh, <laughs> when you come that's home, just one of the lessons, that's a simple lesson to learn. But yeah, yeah. but that was 
That's you a should, fun lesson. Uh, you should have a poncho when you come over for festival season. <laughs> Packed. That's something we still haven't learned. You can buy them we probably for about two morning. pounds yeah. anywhere in the UK. I know, I know. And we just and we and we even talk about oh, I bet it's going to be raining there, and we still don't <laughs> pick them up. But uh, other than that, we uh, haven't really learned much. <laughs> And what is an ideal day for Panic at the Disco? An ideal day? Mm-hmm. Well... I love waking up on the bus. That's like one of my favorite things. Why? Waking up. As much as I miss everything about home, a girlfriend, dogs, everything, comforts of home, I just love sleeping on the bus. I don't know, it's like, uh, you know, when it starts moving, it rocks you to sleep, and then you wake up and you're in a new city. And that's always just attracted me to, to traveling, just in, in general, being a nomad and kind of not really having a set home, you know, you're just always on the road. I don't know, I just love it. It's like a comforting thing. And you? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, I'm actually used to sleeping on the bus now. It kind of rocks you to sleep. Yeah. It's like you're a baby again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just wake up and... Uh, you know, sometimes there's you're around an area that you can walk around and get to see, you know, things that you have never seen before in a city you may have never been in before. Or sometimes you're in the middle of nowhere, so you're sort of limited to where you could just walk around. But other than that, as long as there's, uh, you know, if we're overseas, good internet, then we can contact people at home. And if there's not, then you have to do something that's really boring, like read. And, like, who wants to do that? Okay, cool. Thanks, guys. Cool, thank you. Awesome.